I have no idea how you've done this, but you've done it. You've managed to take a game about orc steampunk pirates flying magical airships into aerial battles against fire-breathing dragons and make it boring. I have no idea how you've achieved this, but my god, you have achieved it so hard. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on a journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid and sub to the channel for more awful MMOs and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. Remember you can join the live premiere of new videos at 8pm Monday and Thursday. If you're enjoying the series so far and would like it to continue, please consider supporting through the Patreon. You'll find the link in the description below. Today we are playing Luck Catchers. It's on Steam, it's free and it's 4.5 gigs, so let's give it a go. The Steam video makes it look awesome. It's a steampunk airship pirate adventure and I love all of those words. Steampunks, pirates and airships. My favourite band is Abney Park. Favourite musical is The Dolls of New Albion. Favourite TV show is obviously Firefly. You tell me a game is going to combine all of those? I am absolutely on board, no pun intended. But hang on, wait, go back. Watch the Steam trailer video very closely. There's a rather bad spelling mistake. This is meant to say smuggle illegal products, but they've missed the S, so it just says muggle illegal products. Muggle, like from Harry Potter. Oh dear. You'd think you'd pay a bit more attention to your own Steam trailer. That doesn't bode well. And we begin. So this is an orcs versus humans game. Hmm, interesting. I've never known a game do that before. That is definitely an original idea. There's also no background music on this section. It's just ambient silence. So orcs can build faster, but humans get better technology. I've not seen orcs and steampunk together before, so let's go with the orcs. Now the tutorial, the opening section. The very first experience a new player has with this game is absolutely awful. Let me take you through this steaming pile of supposed tutorial. We open to a third person view of an airship. Well, airship is a stretch. It's a moving platform we're standing on. The plot is given to us in a massive info dump and has way too many sci-fi fantasy sounding words for things that already have words. The Sorharon, that's the platform we're standing on, is transporting us to the capital. We are holding a powerful relic called the Inside Out and other people want this. We are armed with energy guns, a lightning gun and a leap generator. Flying acceleration is achieved by gliding and you can fly faster using glide mode. Everything making sense so far? Good, I thought so. During this section, you have no control over the ship at all. You can't turn or tilt up and down. You have to just sit there and wait as the game slowly flies you toward wherever the capital is. The one movement control you do have is going into glide mode, which makes you move forward very slightly faster. Pretty quickly we get attacked. Now you do have guns, but to fight back you have to go into combat mode, which means you zoom into first person, then you hold left click to fire. This is combat mode. While in combat mode, your mouse movement slows to a complete crawl. Seriously, I had to drag my mouse across my whole desk, pick it up, put it back at the other side and drag again several times to make one full turn in the game. This turret turn speed is just grim. And oh, obviously the zoom is reversed. Scrolling forward zooms you backwards, scrolling backwards zooms you in, because why not? Wow, they have managed to make a mid-air steampunk pirate battle boring. That is quite the achievement. We're prompted to open the skill tree and told to level up magic. You can see the magic graphic is flashing, but I want to explore the rest of the skill tree, so I scroll around for a bit, and this reveals the flashing magic icon wasn't actually anchored to the skill tree itself. It's just a flashing graphic on the screen at this moment, and the game designers hoped you wouldn't do anything else before clicking it. Back into attack mode for more combat, turning is still slow, so who are you people? Why do I have an artifact? Why are you shooting me? What even is this opening? Now we're shown how to leap 
It's an ability we have we can only use when not in combat mode, and it just moves the ship randomly in a direction, helping us avoid incoming fire. It's like an instant teleportation. I need to change this mouse sensitivity, so I open the menu, go into settings, and oh wait, no, I don't go into settings because clicking the settings button does nothing. You can't change them, can't even see them. What a great first five minutes in the game. There is no way this is the opening of your game. The moment designed to get new players hooked. The only part that most people will ever play is this bad. It's a weak, unexplained plot. You don't even have control of your ship. Combat is so sluggish. I refuse to believe this is what you thought was a good first experience. So, I'm going to turn the game off and start again. This is not going to be my first impression. Reloading the game and it turns out I've been shot down, so I click return to the place of launch. Maybe I'll get to play a better tutorial, but no, now the real pain begins. You might be thinking, as I was, wow, this looks quite a lot like a real-time strategy game. And you'd be right. You see, Luck Catchers, despite advertising itself as an action-packed steampunk pirate adventure, is mostly about trade and navigation, taking stuff from one town to another, then building or upgrading yourself while in that town. Oh good, look, I've got some hints on the left, so I read the top hint. Okay, got it. Then I click the X to remove the hint, and watch what happens. It removes the lowest hint on the list, not the top. It removes something I've not read yet. And before I realised it had done this, I just assumed I'd misclicked, so I click again. I have now removed two hints I actually need, because the close message button works in the stupidest way ever. Okay then, all I've got to do is work out how to play a badly written MMO with a badly designed real-time strategy game interface. This should be simple. I mean, I made it through Icarus Online and that's in Russian. I can make it through this. Now I've played a lot of real-time strategy games and I'm pretty good. I don't mean to brag, but I've actually played a game of Command & Conquer against one of the best Command & Conquer players in the world. The YouTuber, it's TJ. Many years ago, myself and three other people teamed up to take him on four versus one and we almost didn't lose. First rule of real-time strategy games, you can move the camera around to view the battlefield except no, you can't. The only way you can move is by clicking from building to building, but only the buildings that are considered part of this settlement, not the identical looking settlements next to you. How do you know which buildings are included? You don't. They all look the same, and there's no area markings on the ground. You just have to click around and hope. Each building does something different, upgrade your ship, make stuff, sell or buy things. I kind of get this system, it's similar to how Command & Conquer build things, but I don't have anywhere near enough resources to do anything, so it's kind of useless right now. I managed to find the hangar which has my ship stored in it. Through trial and error and clicking everything, I managed to launch the ship and regain control of it. You've got to double click back on the ship once it's in the air. Ah, the tutorial boxes are back, fantastic, with videos. Let's give them a watch, maybe they will explain this complex mess a little bit better. No, they don't really, because the videos don't have sound and they don't have voiceover and the video footage is filmed in the game's native language, which is Russian, so all the text in the video is in Russian characters. This is useless. So I try and close the video, but no, you can't close it. Clicking the red X in the top right does nothing. You have even managed to mess up a close window button. All right, back on the ship. I do not know how to fly this thing. There's been no tutorial. The first ship experience I had was just in a straight auto flying line. So I just click on the abilities until something happens. All I'm able to do is fly full speed straight out over the ocean. I'm pressing all the keys, W, A, S, D do nothing, spacebar is useless. I do manage to find the ascend and descend abilities, but my god are they slow. I'm sure they were going for a realistic flying engine physics here, but realistic airships suck. They're only fun because we ignore the physics needed to make them fun. I find the ship's settings menu, listing the guns and stuff it's equipped with. It seems I can change some sliders to do with range and stuff. I don't know what this is used for yet, so I'll leave it alone until it matters. Oh hey look, in the distance, there's other blue ships launching and flying around. Let's go and join them, see what's going on. Now you can move by choosing move and then clicking into the distance, but this is a 3D game. It's impossible to set a 3D coordinate, longitude, latitude and height with a single click on a 2D screen. You can't judge depth, 
so by clicking to move into the distance, I end up just spinning in circles. Finally, after a good five minutes of slowly climbing and gliding, I make it to the other planes. They're just flying in a circle. I can't go into attack mode and I'm only level one, so there's no combat here. Just disappointment. These controls are awful. Putting a real-time strategy control scheme into a supposed action steampunk pirate adventure airship game just makes it feel super slow and super dull. And while we're talking about bad controls, here's a short but very important message to any budding developer wanting to put realistic physics into their action, steampunk, sci-fi or adventure game. The coolest part of any sci-fi chase, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, Firefly, Avengers, whatever, are when the ships go fast and the adrenaline is pumping. However, we are all very much aware these moves would be physically impossible. A large enough spaceship would rip itself apart trying to turn that fast, and a small enough spaceship would never generate enough thrust to actually turn that quickly. Plus, it would kill the crew. In real life, it takes minutes, if not hours, to substantially change the course of large vessels. Look, you know when Iron Man lands and comes to an instant stop on the floor? Realistically, he'd break every bone in his body and turn to jelly. But we don't do that because that would be bad storytelling. So please, consider making your game slightly unrealistic if doing so makes the game actually fun to play. The attack ability tells me I can hold down shift and click on it to activate auto attack. So I hold down shift and the ability selection changes. Oh, I guess I can't shift click attack because the button disappears. This new section, however, does have a button that lists all the safe cities to land at showing how far away they all are from me, and clicking on a city in the list instantly sets me on a course for it. This could be very useful. Oh, also, my keyboard now works and I can fly the ship manually. W, A, S and D. A and D are turn left and right, W and S is speed up or slow down, and Q and Z climb or descend. But it's not instant or very responsive. Pressing a button makes your ship start doing that thing, but it's very, very slow. Imagine trying to drive a remote control car with a two second delay. It's like that. While flying around, you'll notice these orange boxes around objects on the floor. They are your resources. Fly close to them and you'll collect them, adding them to your hold. The auto land feature doesn't seem to do much as it just makes me hover in the air. I mean, the clue is in the name, land. We are meant to be on the land. Fly around some more and discover the extraction skill. Only works when you're close to the ground and it makes you blast the ground with a bolt of energy and send resources flying around everywhere so then you can fly over and collect them. Using the extraction ability requires mana, but there's nothing to stop you blasting all your extraction charges into one place then just drifting in a small circle to pick everything up. It's just a slow but constant drift forward and the ambient music is, well, there isn't any. It's just the droning sound of engines, which is almost putting me to sleep. Finally, dragons appear. Combat time for an action-packed aerial dogfight. Watch and marvel at the intensity of the combat. So that was slightly more fun, but my cargo hold is full and I need to return home, maybe sell some stuff, but, um, oh, I don't remember where home is. And there's nothing that really shows me. All these villages look identical. Does it matter which one I land at? So the world map shows the holds and the guilds and all the owned bastions, but you can't zoom in or out or search for places. And a lot of the guild icons overlap the actual writing on the map, making navigation quite tricky. Look over the skill tree again. That's a system I can remember from the tutorial and I cannot afford anything. Not a single upgrade. Everything is out of my price range. Maybe I can use the landmarks to navigate home, like that large arch on the hill or the capital city. I'm sure I saw those earlier. Ooh, maybe it'll be like Treasure Island using the North Star to navigate home. Searching for adventure. 
being a professional pirate. Well, that failed. I am still lost. But now there's a massive convoy in the air ahead of me, and they seem to know where they're going. So you know what? I'll just casually slide in and slink along with them. Hopefully blend in and start a new life as a trader. Well, this wasn't the starting village, but I figured out you can descend low enough and then land at any town. There's no landing animation. You just suddenly are landed, and you can now click on the buildings. This village seems pretty much the same as the one that we started at, but with one big difference. The hangar here is a little bigger. See, the old hangar held about 25 ships, and this one seems to hold 777. Feel free to count. It's 37 spaces across and 21 squares down. I have a feeling this might be a glitch. Oh, remember how you can only move the camera by clicking from building to building? Well, every time you do, the building you click on plays a sound effect, and they all layer together, and they're all far too long, so clicking lots of buildings sounds like complete garbage. I don't have enough resources to upgrade anything, even after collecting all the extraction materials, so I guess I'm just launching and flying off again? This cannot be the new player experience. There is no way this is what you want people to remember. The start of your game is so important. It's what becomes people's first memory, and this is dire. And oh look, it's another game that describes itself as a do-anything-you-want game. That's literally the first paragraph on the Luck Catchers wiki, which is also apparently a real thing. I've explained this before, games aren't do whatever you want, they are do whatever the developer programmed in, because what I want to do is fly my ship at blistering speed through a dangerous and unknown mountain range while shooting down a dragon. But I can't do that, because it's not in the game. Okay, maybe the human starting experience is better, so let's be thorough and find out. Let's go and play a human. Oh, fun times. Starting as a human makes us go through the same opening tutorial, standing still on an uncontrollable disc, shooting down whatever few enemies we do happen to see. I mean, at least I have a basic idea of how combat works now. You can't control the ship, the glide mode seems pointless, because you still get hit, and leaping uses up loads of mana, which is better used on the chain lightning attack, so you're best just staying in combat mode the entire time. I shoot down as many enemy ships as I can, and I earn a steam achievement. What do you think it's called? Maybe Pro Pilot? Or Dead Eye? Or Sharpshooter? Maybe Airship Pirate? No. It's called Random. Wonder how many players have this? I'll check later. I make it further than last time, and oh, more enemies are appearing. This is basically an on-rails shooter against waves of enemies. Oh, and now there's smoke blending with the clouds and making it impossible to see anything. I bet this was a realistic design choice. Some developer said, oh yeah, real aerial firefights are chaotic and you can't see anything, so let's put smoke everywhere. No, developer, no. There is a limit on where your realism goes, and I draw the line at preventing the player from seeing the game. These enemy planes are getting smaller and smaller in size, making them harder and harder to hit, but they're also doing more and more damage. You've got to lead every single shot and shoot at where they might be, and they're getting faster. The chain lightning attack is great, but uses all my mana, so when the game says quickly use leap to get out of the way of the really high damage attack, I am out of mana and can't, so I take loads of damage. Also, the tutorial tells me to press 4 to leap, which is wrong, because leap is naturally bound to the 9 key. Did no one play this and check? I leap, I shoot, I leap, I shoot. I use chain lightning, I shoot some more. I keep leaping and shooting, and so far this tutorial has gone on for 18 minutes. An 18 minute uncontrollable on rails shooter is the opening to your MMO. Good God, why? Finally, I get shot down, and when I revive, oh great, we're back in the real time strategy bit. The buildings still make noise, although now it's a human noise instead of an orcish noise. It is still bad, though. The tutorial catches up with itself, and now I'm introduced to contracts. These will take up the bulk of the gameplay. Opening the contracts menu shows you places that need stuff taken to other places. You can filter it to only show contracts that start where you are. Accepting a contract adds that contract item, shown as a wooden box, into your ship's hold, and you can accept as many as you like. You've then got four hours to complete them. So I load up with goods bound for the city of Hearth, and fly off. I mean, I don't know where Hearth is. I watch the video of contracts, see if that helps. It doesn't. Oh, remember that list of cities, the safe places to land? 
I wonder if half is on there. It is. And clicking it sets me on course. Great, we are on our way to Hearth. Only a few miles away, so I just sit back and wait. There's also a white arrow on the minimap now. I'm guessing that's pointing to our current destination. Okay, so... Is this it? Is this the core gameplay loop? Take cargo from one city to another, earn money, upgrade to bigger or faster ships and better guns so we can take more cargo to more places faster. Yeah, I mean, you can absolutely do anything you want, provide you really, really want to be an aerial postman. Look, here is some real-time footage of what playing this game is actually like. You don't need to steer. We've already set the course. We're in a safe zone, so I can't go into combat mode. Even if we did, there's no enemies nearby. There's nothing I can upgrade while not in a city. There's no story or plot. It's literally just sit and watch. Who thought this was a good gameplay mechanic? Let's have a look at the other items we're carrying just to fill some video time. We have a mana potion, but we don't cast magic. The ship has magical guns, so do we just pour this over the ship? Oh, fireworks! They are used as anti-anti-aircraft distractions. Launching a firework apparently distracts other ships and guns and dragons. Didn't they use a similar tactic in one of the Dawn of the Dead movies, where fireworks made all the zombies look up at the sky so they could drive past them? Eventually, after a thrilling action-packed journey, we land, complete the contracts, and earn that sweet, sweet silver. And I've now earned so much money, I can afford to buy nothing at all. So let's take a load more contracts from here to somewhere else. Right, these goods need to go to Misty Beragor. It's eight miles away, so all hands on deck. Set a course. Three sheets to the wind. Let the adventure begin. This is awful. I wanted a game about airship pirates, and I got a game about trade and commerce within responsible heights and speeds. This isn't piracy, it's delivery. I'm a courier. This reminds me of the opening of Star Wars Episode One, and stay with me, because this analogy does make sense. When The Phantom Menace came out, we were promised a Star Wars film, but can you remember how the film opened, the first plot point? Trade negotiations and a taxation blockade. It opened with corporate bureaucracy. The very first experience a new viewer had of The Phantom Menace was people arguing about import and export figures. This is the same. It's a promise of action and adventure that has us shipping totally legal goods slowly city to city. This is like being told you get to be Han Solo, but everything you do is legal and above board, and you're just flying safely and carefully between ports, picking up and dropping off packages for people. Imagine watching Firefly, except instead of an anti-hero show about a ragtag bunch of charming ne'er-do-wells led by a charismatic captain, it's just a show about long-distance haulage. And they always fill in their paperwork on time. Not even an interesting show like Ice Road Truckers, just road truckers. But no, even trucks are cool. What's uncool? Vans. Small white vans. That's what this game is. Watch average man in small white van deliver average van stuff. Luck catchers. Oh, hey, I never checked that achievement from earlier, the one called random. Well, prepare yourself, dear viewer. Random is awarded for shooting down 10 ships. I achieved this in the tutorial because, honestly, it's kind of hard not to if you're paying attention. How many players do you think have this achievement? Not players on Steam, but players who have played this game. 0.7%. I am in the top 1% of players for this game. I am a global authority on luck catchers. Everything I say from now on carries more weight. I arrive at Hearth and land, but I made a mistake. You see, I accepted more contracts than I could actually carry, and if you do that, the cargo isn't added to your ship, it's added to the warehouse of the village you're at. So I've delivered what I had, but there's more waiting back at the original village, so I've got to fly back, but, and here's a pro gamer tip, straight to you from one of the top luck catcher players in the world, me. If you need to fly back, it's super efficient to go into the new contracts menu and accept a load of contracts that need you to take cargo back from where you are now to the original city, thus making each trip generate more money. Pro Gamer Strat.
It's actually surprisingly complex to set all this up. There's menus that aren't intuitive and systems that work by dragging and others that work by clicking, but I managed to get all of this sorted and ready to go, so off we go! Back to hearth, all hands on deck, launch the mainsails, swab the captain. Oh, it's just not as much fun to say stuff the second time. While we're flying back, let's read some reviews of this game. There is a reason some people hate on the game and have basically no played time. Cuss it's not a very fun game. Can't figure out how to turn in cargo transport quest. All I can do is fly around, which while fun for a few minutes is kinda pointless. I could do nothing but fly forwards or fly faster. Total garbage. Okay, I know what some of you are probably thinking. Oh, I've just cherry-picked the bad reviews or chosen reviews with less playtime. Well, yeah, I have. I haven't shown you the top two rated reviews with the highest total playtime because they are even worse. This is a review from a player with 1,300 hours. It starts, This is the post I made on the forums that not only got deleted, but got me banned from the game and the forums. He then goes on to expose the abuse of developer power to exploit players and resources in the game. This is a review from a 600-hour player explaining how massively pay-to-win the whole thing really is and how a few elite clans rule the majority of the world. Well, I never. An MMO with player-controlled cities that winds up being totally controlled and dominated by a few powerful clans which makes the game unfun for everyone else? I've never heard of that happening before. Who could have possibly seen that situation coming? It's like developers don't even play the types of games they want to make. This is one of the most boring parts of the game. This is like Desert Bus, but hell, even Desert Bus needs you to do something every few minutes. You can improve this game massively and make the whole journey actually fun by adding some steampunk rock. Let's blast some Abney Park while we adventure. Proper steampunk music. Seriously, if you're into rock, steampunk, industrial, or just post-apocalyptic punk, I would highly recommend you go and listen to these guys. I make it back to the city and finish another contract, but god, is this all I'm going to be doing? Airship haulage. There's more adventure and excitement in one Abney Park song than in this whole bloody game. Maybe I'll accept a contract to a more distant city, travel further afield, see the world, hope it doesn't look like the rest of the world. Here we go. Misty Berogor to Cauldron, 36 miles away. Warning, dragons en route. Yes, that's more like it. Let's do this. 36 miles of intense adventure. Here we go. Thirty-six miles of adventure! Yay! I find Cauldron on the world map. It's here, and we are the red flag symbol here, so it's going to take some time. Oh good lord, look at this! Sliding the scroll bar on this text box is just wrong! The text is aligned to the bar! Why? You want more steampunk music? Okay then, let's throw on some Swords for Hire by John Magnificent. Link in the description. It makes this game infinitely better. Hey, at least we're in a combat area now. Maybe we'll have some dragon battles. Oh, we do! Oh, check this out. And I'm not sure if I like this system, but it is interesting. The guns on your ship have different facings and can only be used when you're aiming to the correct side. You'll see the gun icon at the bottom glow when it can be used, and all the ammunition in every gun is tracked independently. Meaning if you exclusively fire the front gun, eventually you'll have to drift sideways and start firing some broadsides. It's definitely an interesting system. Yes, finally, dragon attacks. Here we go. Aerial combat, please be good. The dragon has clipped under the ground and is flaming me from below. I cannot see it, aim at it, or hurt it. Yay, aerial combat. So I just fly up. And now the game tells me I'm too high and the dangerous altitude will hurt me and the Demon Cage will take damage. I will admit that Demon Cage is a cool name for a piece of equipment, but you can't be too high, because the sky is dangerous. And you can't be too low, because apparently the dragons can burrow. Fight off some more dragons, mouse is still slow. You can see the red dots of enemies on the minimap showing you where they are around you, but not their altitude, so they could be way above or way below you. The only way to know is to rapidly flick the mouse around, which in first person gets a little bit nauseating. Then, and I don't know why or how or what I did, but I lose all control of the ship and the camera, and the camera decides to just get stuck facing downwards, and the guns are jammed on. I can't click. I can't press a key. I can't even press escape. The game just locks, 
like this. I even minimize and maximize. I leave by alt tabbing, control alt deleting. Each time I bring the game window back up, it is still stuck like this. I can't get my cursor back, I can't move the camera, I can't control the ship, and I can't stop the guns from firing all my ammunition into the ground. I can see my HP is slowly going down because the dragons are flaming me to death, but I can't stop it, so I guess I'll just accept my fate and drift off to death. My death glide wasn't as graceful as I wanted, as I've crashed into the ground but not slowed down, so I'm just scraping along the floor being treated to this close-up of a tree while still being flamed. And I can't change course. This is not the dignified death I wanted. Also, an airship crashing into a forest is a little too close to the opening of Icarus Online. Before I lost control of the guns, I gained another Steam achievement, Stray Shot, for killing 10 dragons. Just over 1% of players have this, so you best understand how damn elite I am at this game. I mean, just look, how many players do you think even know about the scrape your face along the floor stare downwards tactic? Not many. That's how many. Not many at all. 15 minutes later and I am still sliding gracefully along the forest floor, still waiting for death. At least we all get a really good look at the ground and I think we can all agree improvements could probably be made. Finally, after an age, we reach the edge of the cliff, drift into the sky and get taken to zero hit points. We blow up and crash. The mouse cursor comes back and we respawn at a town. But, um, now there's a problem. I don't have any ships in any of the hangars. I only had one ship and I just blew it up. And I don't have enough resources to build another. What happens now? If you lose your ship, do you just give up? Are you locked out of the game on account of not having another ship? I click all the buttons on the UI to really pad out this video's runtime and discover there is a telegraph system which basically lists recent stuff that's happened. My death has been added to it. And there's an achievement list showing cool stuff players have done over their lifetime. This player has apparently killed 6.2 million dragons. 6.2 million? Really? Okay, hang on. According to MMORPG.com, this game released in 2016. That's close to five years ago. In five years, there's about 8,760 hours in a year. That's 43,800 hours in five years. This means this guy has shot down 148 dragons an hour, every hour, constantly without sleep for five years. That's impossible, so let's assume he sleeps 8 hours a day and gets the remaining 16 in for dragon killing. That would mean this player has shot down 222 dragons an hour, 16 hours a day, every single day without fail since this game launched for 5 years. I am doubting this number. Can I please stop playing yet? How long have I been here for? It feels like ages. Oh god, I've only been in the game for 4 hours! What? That means... Fine, right, more gameplay. Come on, gotta be thorough. The human ship is dead, so I guess we're going back on the Orc. The hold is full in this ship, that means I can't accept any more contracts, so I drop a load of stuff to make space, and I find a new feature. Whenever you drop anything, you are forced to wait five seconds before you can click the OK button. You are forced to wait for this timer every single time you try and drop anything. Right, hold is free, accept another contract. Got the goods, we are off to steal Navgal. All decks on sale, hoist the jib, roger the cabin boy, scrub the keel, throw him in the bed with the captain's daughter. It's no use, nothing makes this game piratey. I'm so bored. I never imagined a steampunk pirate airship game about smuggling contraband past fire-breathing dragons could be boring, and yet here we are. Arrive, drop off the goods, pick up some more, off to another place. God, this really is it, isn't it? The next port is 10 miles away, so let's go. So according to the world map, humans start in Beragor and orcs begin just south of that. The most distant city is 419 miles away, which is one number away from being amusing. I wonder how many people have ever even seen that city. In fact, I wonder how many people will ever see it. I open the world map and click on the very far bottom left corner, coordinate A1, as far from here as we can get, and I just fly. It's a hell of a long journey. There is some combat along the way, and it's still brief and awkward. And you know what's annoying? The dragon AI isn't bad. They swoop down nicely, they fly around, they circle back, and they attack when close. With a bit of work and a better player flight system, this could be a decent dogfight game. 
17 minutes into this journey and we've made it three small map squares with about 30 left to go. The background noise for the whole journey is just a droning, looping engine hum. Have a listen to what I have had to have a listen to. When you do manage to take a dragon down, they spiral nicely down to their death. Care was clearly put into the dragons, but not much else. 25 minutes in, I get swarmed by dragons and again blown up. Now I've lost my human ship and my orc ship, and honestly, I'm done. I've had enough, so let's wrap this up. Steampunk airship pirates, fire-breathing dragons, smuggling contraband. How can you mess these factors up? How can you take them and make them dull? Well, apparently, by having the world's worst opening gameplay section, a real-time strategy-style town interface, a boring courier gameplay loop, super slow and unresponsive ships, repetitive fights, and no way to seemingly recover from death. They took such an awesome concept, a load of awesome concepts, and ruined every one of them. It sounded amazing on paper. It sounded like it could not possibly fail. It had all the ingredients there to be brilliant. And what did it do? It focused on trade agreements, business negotiations, and a slow, boring story. It thought we wanted to see the reality of the legal system and believable timescales instead of just being fun, action-packed adventure. Which is why the final rating for Luck Catchers is The Phantom Menace out of 10. Cheers for watching. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. If you're enjoying the series and would like more, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title of worst MMO, then check the video descriptions for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And as always, have a great day.